So when I first uh, decided that I was going to try to make some tongue drums, it was because of the videos that I came across on YouTube. I fell in love with um, the drums that Boxed Music was putting out. They have a YouTube channel, and it was that drum specifically. It's uh, just a 39 second clip, and that is what I based my first successful uh, tongue drum on. I'll play it for you real quick here. But yes, it is Boxed Music. They are, uh, their channel is called Boxed Music. Um, and they have, um, it's just beautiful. Uh, that really got the gears turning. I remember seeing uh, a tongue drum in uh, a shop called Wooden Voices down in, uh, down on State Street in Madison. And... What's up? Guess what? I jumped the, um, you know the wood pieces? Yeah. I, I put them um, diagonal, like mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. And then put them three by threes, and then went down the drive and jumped it. It was like a foot. Jumped it with what? The scooter. Your scooter? Yes. Sweet. I went, and Nathan was watching, and I got it clean. Come over here. Let's see your blue hair. Yeah. Blue hair, everybody. Ready to ready to go back to school. Yeah. See that blue hair? Yeah. All right. Scissors. Did you make that thing? The tongue or something? No, I made yours almost exactly like it. <laughs> Sweet. Love you. Okay. Anyways, I, I, the first time I ever saw a tongue drum was on uh, State Street in Madison. If I were to guess the year, it probably would be around 1997. So I seen one and then for some reason started thinking about it, thinking about making one. And this is before I even um, started woodworking, but anyways, it's a 39 second video and I completely, completely dissected this, this, this drum, um, tried to learn as much as I could about it. Uh, they do have a website, Box Music, um, does have a website right here. Oops, I'll go to their homepage. Um, let me tell you. You've got to be really good um, and have many years of experience if you're going to make tongue drums uh, at the level that these guys are making them. Uh, what I set out to make for myself, I wouldn't have been able to achieve without being able to kind of see and, and learn from what these guys put out. Not all the information's there uh, as far as tuning goes. Um, so I am going to show you how um, I learned how to tune them. This is not, this probably isn't the same way that they uh, tune theirs or everybody else tunes theirs. This is just what I found worked for me. Um, there's a very simple video out there by uh, Michael Carmichael. Carmichael? I think I'm saying that right. I'll put the link down in the... Uh, description. It's a very basic way of doing it and had it not been for that video, that very basic video, I uh, wouldn't have been able to come up with my own way. So I'm not saying my way is the right way. I am definitely not going to say that this is the only way that you can do it, but this is the way that I found to do it. Okay. The drum that we're working on today, let me uh, stop this. The drum that we're working on today is one that I built with scrap wood. Okay, this one is not tuned at all. And uh, this was in the scrap wood, uh, oh geez, scrap wood bin at work. Um, it's kind of funky and choppy. Uh, I just wanted to see if I could make one out of scraps. 
that I get from work. So this is all what was supposed to be uh, part cabinet parts, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, um, things that are kind of important when making these is that you want to have solid, like something solid here for the notes to connect, okay? Now, what I am going to be using uh, to carve the bottom, because you have to carve the bottom um, to lower the pitch of the drum, you are, or the note, the tongue itself, you are going to want to remove wood from the base. Um, I always start there, okay, to raise the pitch, you start there. Now this is a maple top, um, I know the tongues are a little bit short, so, um, I'm basically, this one's an experiment. Um, I've already had success with maple, so I know maple will work. Um, plus it's uh, uh, pretty easy to find, um, not too hard as far as uh, cutting through it. Um, and uh, what I'm using to cut the uh, wood, if this can focus right here, focus, focus, is a $19, Tool shop Dremel and a five dollar uh, Dremel bit. Uh, it's like a saw cutting bit. This is the bit that I found works the fastest and uh, is the best to remove the wood. Um, so what I uh, plan on doing this most of the times. I will plan out chords and stuff like this, but I'm going to take one note and I am going to keep going up the notes like a piano. Um, so I'm going to carve one to see what the lowest tone is I can get out of this and then work my way up. And I'll put that on time lapse and show you. It takes me, I would say, sometimes around 30 minutes uh, per note. I'm using a mic, uh, and the mic goes into my uh, audio box, USB, into my Studio One program. I've already got a preload for tuning right here, um, something that I set up, so it's going to load. Uh, what I do is I put an EQ on it because I want to block out all the other frequencies that may be coming in. I'll give you a close look at that EQ. Come on. Okay, let's get a close look at this. Um, so I'm basically blocking anything below 100 to 1,000 out. Um, most of the notes, um, I think the lowest I've tuned is 110 hertz, which I believe is a C. It's either a C or an A. Like a low, I think it's a low A. Yeah. Yeah, it's a low A. Um, and then the highest, I don't remember what the note was, but it was around the 600 hertz range. Once you get above the 600 hertz range, uh, you're getting a very short note, nothing really sustaining much after that. So, um, and then I also have a compressor and those are my compression settings. Here's the tuner right here. And then I do put an analog delay on it sometimes because when you're starting out, the notes don't really s sustain very long. And then on this side right here, I uh, have a keyboard down here. And I use that to reference notes uh, if I need to reference anything. So. So that's 164 in E3. Yep, that's 
that's 110 hertz or 109.9 that's an a2 that's the lowest i've been able to go so can i take scrap wood from work and make a tongue drum out of it we'll find out Okay, so I finally got a read on a note. A lot of times when you start out, um, you won't get any kind of read on there. You can see it's coming in at an A4 consistently, which is about 440 hertz. Um, and right now, as far as drilling it out, I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's see if I can get that is about as much as I've drilled out. You're gonna want to check your depth um, just to make sure that you don't go through. Uh, but that's just the beginning. That's 440, and I've got plenty of left to carve away. Uh, I'm gonna bring this one down as much as I can, and that means getting this thing flexible. Right now I'm going to check the depth and you can easily do that with a piece of sandpaper and just Okay, so you can see the sandpaper right there poking through I just do it until I see the sandpaper. Oh, sorry Until I see the sandpaper Coming up and we are right about there. So that's about as much thickness as we have left, which would be that. So still, uh, still plenty to go away. I'm gonna go more this way right now, kind of space this out and see what kind of uh, flex I get in the note. Um, you're gonna wanna make these so that they vibrate, so that they make a noise. Um, so, and that has a lot to do with how good they flex. So I will grind away a little bit more at it and I'll be back at my next uh, reading. So I am at, uh, decided that this one is going to be an A, that's going to be the lowest note and it's going to be an A3. An A3 which hovers around 219.9 hertz and uh, when I first stopped I had it at a B and I was like oh man. Nothing really starts on like B, um, you know, and, and A is a really popular note. Um, so I, uh, I probably went um, a little normal further down than I'm comfortable with. You can see a little bit of flex in there. This one has like zero flex in it. 
That one's got some flex and Okay, a couple things I want to talk about. Let's see if I can get a good shot with some light in here, maybe. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, I got to this point here, okay? And the problem that I ran into is you get so close to the halfway point, you're frequency starts going up okay this is what's going to bring the frequency up and this is what's going to bring the frequency down and once you cross that halfway point it's not really going down anymore now this right here is like the prime real estate okay um you are going to get once you get down to the, to this end here uh, you'll be able to make changes of, you know, anywhere between 50 to 100 hertz uh, when you start cutting away at that. Um, but as time goes on and the more material you uh, remove and you get closer to this area, um, you are going to start to gain less, or I'm sorry, lose less hertz or lower the hertz. Um, or the frequency over here. So I'd say around here I was making 100 hertz difference. Then here it became like, you know, the 50 to 30. And then here it's more like 15 and then 10. And then, um, gosh, then once I reached this point, it stopped going down. So I'll give you a better look at that. It stopped going down and it kind of stayed where it was. So I know I couldn't remove any more uh, of this end. So I pushed it back. Sometimes I like to push it under, uh, push the Dremel under this area. Um, and you got to be careful with that because you are going to make huge changes. So um, like I just snipped a little bit away from this area and now uh, I am below in a, I'm at 216 hertz and I need to be at 220. So that means I have to remove about three hertz from this area to get it into a perfect pitch. Um, so now I am going to start at removing a little bit at the top. You always want to start with the bottom first. Um, or at least I do um, and then try to get it as close as you can and try not to go too far away from where you want to be at as far as uh, the pitch um, so start here in this area and then once you get to below where you are then chip a little bit away or if you can uh, tune it perfectly just leave it on this end but I don't want to go much thinner than that I'll show you real quick what the uh, the depth is and we do that by using the sandpaper or how much thickness I have left at this end and see that's about level right there so that's how thick that part is I'm sorry so camera is running out of battery. Uh, I'm gonna take away these three hertz soon and uh, don't have much time. Um. Ah. Let me show you real quick where I'm at on the, okay. So yes, going up a little bit. So that is all I had to do to take away from the top. And now we are sitting at an A3 on that note at 
219 something hertz. When you see green, that's good. It can be a little flat, but I'll I'll take it. Kind of hops around a bit. I'll take it. So we went from something like this to something like this. Now I only have uh, 14 more to do. So that is how you tune, uh, or that is how I tune a tongue drum. And uh, yeah, um, if you have any questions, hit me up. Um, and uh i'll see if there's anything i can do to to help you out if you if you're gonna try this and run into any problems but yeah that took about a half an hour um these uh aren't easy for me to make they do take a lot of time but i'll tell you when you get one done they're so much fun to play and this one is going to be different than all my other ones because it's not going to be tuned to a scale. So it's just going to be one octave from A3 all the way up to A4, hopefully, um, with all the sharps included. So um, that's it for today. Uh, if you like my videos and you want to see more, uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. Um, yeah, thanks, and uh, um, I'll do a part two to this video. Um, check out boxedmusic.com. They make beautiful drums. Uh, check out Carmichael's Woodshop. Goofy guy, but sometimes his videos are... Sometimes you can learn some stuff in his videos, but that guy has got like every single tool in the book. But yes, $19 Dremel, $5 bit, $99 DAW, I'm sorry, $99 audio interface, free DAW with the interface, and uh, I got three of these microphones for 60 bucks from Guitar Center. So, uh, yeah, um, thanks.